welcome everyone to TPF Tech Excellence Info Session. So the little quote on the bottom really emphasized what is TPF Tech Excellence. So it's all about strengthening the digital skills and literacy of all TPF staff and consultants across all initiatives. So if you are a TPFer, this is an opportunity for you to become better and to improve on those technologies and those technology skills where you're like, oh, I'm so-so, or I don't have this at all, or I'm not really comfortable. And for those that you're already comfortable in, then it might just really be a refresher or just learning new tips and tricks because technology continues to evolve every day. And so there's always going to be more to learn. TPF Tech Excellence, once again, just means TPF has formally, formally now has an opportunity for TPFers to learn in-house how to use stuff like Google Workspace, like Drive, like Docs, like Outlook, and all this other stuff, which we'll dive more into. Kind of to give everyone a little bit of the background, because we didn't just kind of wake up one day and say, we're going to start offering tech classes, but it was kind of an evolution. So the form, one of our former fellows in 2020, Hannah Sager Karnai, back in 2021, TPF had to transition online to using Zoom because it was no longer safe to be in the office due to the pandemic. The idea came about, well, if we're gonna start using Zoom, we need to have a way to teach all our TPFers how to be equipped to use this platform to be able to go about their TPF work. So she started Zoom school with Hannah, and it was really just a one hour session, kind of walking people like, how do you unmute? How do you mute? How do you do polls and breakout rooms? And how do you create an engaging Zoom experience? And when she was about to launch, to go to her next, to, to, her, to, to her land, her next job opportunity, she passed it down to me. And during a conversation I had with Connor Lagrange, who was another TPF former fellow, we both agreed that TPFers needed to learn more than just Zoom and their TPF work. We recognized that Google applications were another area where TPFers can need help. So we're like, let's evolve Zoom school into TPF tech school. And that was primarily Zoom and Google applications. And the people who really benefited from that endeavor were people who were being onboarded. So if you were just coming into a TPF, you would have like a one or two hour sessions with me and I would walk you through Zoom and Google. But for our, new, uh, for our existing or current TPFers, like the only way you would know that I was offering assistance with Zoom or Google Workspace, like if maybe you knew me and knew I was doing that or knew I was available now, it wasn't really something that was marketed or, or broadcasted. Um, and then in 2023, we were like, well, TPFers need help with more than just Zoom and more than just Google. And it shouldn't just be TPFers who are being onboarded, who are getting to, to benefit from our tech classes or education seminars, web stations, or, and it shouldn't just be TPFers. Who, and even among the TPFers who are being onboarded, it wasn't even, it wasn't even all of them who were invited to these little mini tech classes that I was having. So I had a conversation with Deborah. We need something more formal, more structured that's available to all TPFers. And of course, TPF, you may have heard that TPF does not arrive with the answer when there is an issue or a problem we arrived with a process of discovery. So yes, we knew that TPFers needed something and it would have been easy from the very beginning to be like, we need to create this, but that is not the TPF way. So from May to August of last year, I sent out a series of surveys regarding Twitter, regarding Zoom, regarding Google Workspace applications, asking everyone like, how do you use this? Why do you use that? What are your challenges with this? And what are your challenges from that? And from that, I was able to really learn a lot. A lot of people participated and were really open to share what their successes were, their challenges, what were their confusions, what were their questions. And from that, I have like five main takeaways. TPFers, whatever we were gonna create, TPFers wanted to make sure that there was gonna be a variety of options offered at different times. So one, we all have different learning styles. Some people prefer to read, some people prefer to listen, some people prefer classes, some people prefer to just learn at their own pace or want to do it one-on-one. -on -one. So whatever was going to be created, they wanted to make sure that it would tailor to their different learning styles. 
They also wanted to make sure that I was going to be available at different times because TPFers by nature were busy and some of us have full-time jobs. So they wanted to make sure that even if they do have a full-time job, that there would be opportunities for them to perhaps participate in the evenings or the weekend, week, weekend. And that's also related to accessibility. They wanted to make sure that whatever was created, they would be able to access in different ways. So some people are okay going to do like a self-paced tutorial. Some people want to be able to access it through like a video. So making sure that it's presented, the information is presented different ways was something that was also important. And then fourth and fifth, understanding and application really go together. Some people wanted to understand not only why or how, for example, Google Docs work, but wanting to know like what are the benefits in the first place of using it. So don't just tell me that this is how I use Google Docs, but why would I even want to use Google Docs, especially if I'm already familiar with, with Word. Um, and then application. If once I understand how to use Google Docs, please show me how it fits into my everyday life. The more applicable someone can see a software is to their life, the more likely they are to use it. If I notice that using Docs makes my life a little bit easier, I'm more likely to use it. But if I don't understand what that connection is, it's just kind of something I know that exists, but I never, I never do anything with it because I can't see how it applies to my everyday life, whether it be my TPF work or my personal work. Any questions so far just on that background element? I believe I can see everyone. Okay. And so after I did all that learning and everyone did all that sharing with me, then it was like, well, what are we going to do about it? And that's how TPF Tech Excellence was developed. And the next couple of pages in the slideshow are going to explain the different elements of TPF Tech Excellence. And one of those elements are our tech coaches. This literally came from one of the surveys. Someone literally said, it would be nice to have coaches who we could reach out to for assistance. And I'm like, yes, that is an excellent idea. And now it's, it's part of what we have, TPF tech coaches. There are five of us. That's Carly Myers, Donna Pahalovich, Maribel Martinez, Stacey Sternberg, and Kiara Lewis. I would say all five of us are skilled on a different range of platform, technology platforms. But at the same time, we are learning just as much as you are. So I don't want there to be an expectation that you're going to come to class with one of us and like, you can't teach us something. Because that's not true. Like, it's, it's we're both learning, like we may be in the tech coaches role, and we're here to teach you. But please do know that when you come to any class, or any session, you have as much to give as we as, as we do. And so our goal as TPF Tech Coaches is to create an environment where everyone feels comfortable to learn, to share, to practice, and to make mistakes. I don't like making mistakes. I don't think a lot of people like make, make mistakes. But unfortunately, that is part of us learning. And I know with tech, it can be scary to make mistakes, but just like anything in life, in order for you to learn how to use different softwares, you do gotta kind of make those mistakes, see what happens, and then they're like, oh, now I know not to do that again, because when I do that, this happens and I don't want this to, I don't want this to happen. And, and so our goal is to create those environments or those safe places where people feel like they are empowered, they are encouraged to learn how to use these software platforms and make mistakes because it's all part of the learning journey. And these are our five TPF tech coaches. And so as you go to TPF tech classes, it'll be one of us te teaching the class. So you can always expect to see the five of us. And I'm naming us the Fantastic Five because I have the pleasure of working on different projects with each of these five people. And I know they are amazing and they really do are coming from a place of sincerity of just wanting to help their fellow TPFers. Monthly classes. So part of the role of our TPF tech coaches is offering monthly classes. These classes range, on, there's all sorts of classes that generally focus on Zoom, on Doodle, on Canva, on Calendly, on Google Workspace, and Microsoft. Why those softwares? Because those are the softwares that are prim primarily used within TPF initiatives. I'm sure there, can, there, there, there might be more, but we just needed something to start with. So there's definitely opportunity for this list to grow. But for right now, we're focusing on Zoom, on Google, on Microsoft, on Canva, on Doodle. 
and making sure that our TPFers feel comfortable with using them. So Friday, I'm going to be sending like an official launch email to everyone. It's going to have a sign up sheet. Like these are the 10, 12 classes we are offering to everyone in January. Here are the times, here's who's teaching it, and here's how you register. And that's for January, that's how it's going to go. And in the future, thanks to Deborah Jacobs, who thought of it, in the future, I'm going to be sending a tech excellence newsletter at the beginning, at the end of every month for the next month that'll have all this information in one place. And it might be a little bit easier to, 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 to save somewhere for you to refer to. And everyone, once again, it would just be a newsletter with the sign-up sheet, and then you can just sign up for whatever classes you want to take for the month. And all the information, for the most part, that you would want to know will be on that sign-up sheet. And so the next question that might come to people's mind is what am I signing up for when I take a class? Imagine if, if anyone if anyone here has been to the TPF office, imagine just all, all of us in the TPF boardroom just having a conversation and trying new things. That is what we are trying to recreate. We're really just all together sitting in this virtual room. We have this big screen on the board and we're trying new things and learning the main essential elements that we need to know about each platform, but we're learning together. For every class, there's going to be pre-work that's sent. And for most of them, they can be like five minutes, they can be like about five minutes long to about 15 minutes long. It's really just depending on the nature of the class. And the reason why pre-work is so important is because we don't want the first time you come to class is the first time that you hear certain terms in certain languages. We're not expecting you to remember everything that you did in your pre-work, but at least by the time you come to class, you would have already heard these certain terms and they're not as foreign. You may not still remember what they mean, but at least you'll know you heard them before. And that is a win. Um, and then once you're in class, the goal is really to have it be an interactive experience. So it's really not gonna be your tech coach just saying, and this is this, and this is that, and this is this. And then you leave class not having tried anything because I do find it's when you're trying and practicing stuff that's when you see what your questions are when you start clicking this and this and this and that and then you're like why does it do that or what if I wanted it to go the other way that's when you really start developing some questions that maybe if you are at home then you're like well now I have no one to answer these questions it really would have been nice to answer it during class so it's going to be interactive. Your tech coach is doing certain actions and you have your computer or your desktop with you and you're doing those same motions as they are. And after every class, there's going to be a feedback survey and there's going to be homework. I will stop sharing my screen with a PowerPoint because I do want to give everyone a little idea of what I mean by a feedback by the feedback survey because TPF is really big on those and that's so important. Because this whole endeavor of TPF Tech Equids is still evolving and it's going to continue to evolve. And the only way it's going to get better is if everyone provides their suggestions on what they do like and what they don't like. Because if we just continue doing things that everyone doesn't like, then that's not ideal. One second. Okay. So this example of what the feedback looks like, and it's always going to be the same form. So once you've done one, you kind of know what to expect. It's always going to be your name, your email, who taught the class, who taught who taught the, the particular thing that you want to learn. Was it via class? Was it via one-on-one? -on -one? And what initiatives do you work on? And then the real meat of the feedback survey is selecting what class you attended. Was it in person? Was it virtual? How would you rate it? Some have some have quizzes as a pre-work if it didn't have a quiz and you just skip this what was most useful least useful and then share your thoughts what do you agree with these statements do you disagree was there something you hoped to have learned that you didn't would you like a follow-up one-on-one -on -one with your tech coach and how do you plan to use what you learn in your tpf work beyond so we're asking all these questions because we want to make sure what we're teaching is of benefit to our TPFers. And if someone, if we're getting multiple feedback from people saying, I didn't learn what I thought I was going to learn, well, that tells us that we need to kind of revise our teaching plan or our curriculum so that is, is really tailored towards what TPFers are hoping to learn, rather perhaps what we thought they wanted to learn. 
before I go back to the feedback survey, does anyone have any questions at this time about what the monthly classes entail? And I will. Yeah, Cynthia. Do we have a limit on how many classes? Let's say if you list three classes, can we attend to all three or are we supposed to do only one? So there's definitely not a limit in the number of classes. There's a number of how much you can bill for, which we'll get to that next. But no, it's what like if I'm doing a, a Google Docs class, if I did, if I did, if I'm doing it in January and February and March, if you want to take all three, sure, take all three. I would just say when I do send out the monthly list, I don't think I would recommend you signing up for like everything that's on there. Your schedule might not allow, anyways. But keep in mind, it does involve pre work and it does involve homework. So we want to make sure that you're being intentional with your time and also you're giving yourself enough time to process the information, to practice the concepts and how realistic is it that you're gonna be able to do that if you just signed up for 10 classes? Just an example, just an example, but there's no limit to how many you can sign up for, absolutely not. If anything, what might dictate how many, class, how many classes you sign for is how quick it takes for it to get to capacity. Because the classes do have a capacity, a, a limit of capacity, because we want these to be small intimate spaces because I don't know for me as a TTF tech coach I'm more comfortable teaching with 10 people in a room versus 15 or 20 um and for someone who's attending in a class you might feel more comfortable making mistakes and asking questions if it's five or ten of you versus if it's 25 of you so keeping that in mind the class sizes are small so if you wanted to sign up for a class and it has a capacity of 10 and 10 people already signed up that might be the only thing limiting your your opportunity to take certain classes during the month, but there is no limit. Any other questions people may have? Okay, sharing back the PowerPoint. So when, when you do your homework assignment, after each, before each class ends, we'll kind of walk through the homework assignment, see what questions people have, see if there's any confusion, comments, stuff like that. And by submitting your homework to me, and you'll always be submitting your homework to me regardless of what class you take with who, that is how you're gonna get your TPF tech badge for your passport. We'll go more in detail into that a little bit later, but you're doing your homework is a ticket to you getting a badge. And by getting a badge, you get entered into a spinner, into a spinner wheel. Well, for every five people who get a badge, then we do a spinner wheel, but just know there, there are incentives to getting a badge, but you gotta do your homework. And this is an example of a homework. So for example, Doodle is one of the one of the software that we're offering classes on. The pre-work is creating a Doodle account. And it's also watching like an overview video about what is Doodle. And why do we want you to watch a video about what is Doodle? So you have an idea of what Doodle is by the time you come to class. So we don't have to spend too much time explaining what Doodle is in class. And we can kind of just get straight to the let's practice and actually figure out what it means to make a doodle or why you would even want to make a doodle or what questions you have about making a doodle. And then after your doodle class, you have a homework to practice to see if you really understood what was taught in class. And if you don't, if you get to the homework assignment and you're like, I have no idea where to start, please do not feel like you have failed. Please do not feel like you have wasted your time. Please do not feel like you have wasted the time of your TPF tech coach because you have not. That just means we need to create more of opportunities for you to learn and practice. And that's absolutely okay. A lot of the homework examples are tied to, T to TPF in some way to kind of, once again, going back to people want to know how can they apply what they're learning in their TPF work. So for the doodle homework, I created a doodle scenario that might come up if some in, in the TPF world. For example, if someone needed to do a when you're wonder you're learning book circle, Doodle is a tool you can actually you could actually use. If you were just trying to do a book circle in general outside of you know TPF, you could actually use Doodle to help find the perfect time for you and your ten friends, you know, to meet for a book club or for an outing or for a social party or for whatever whatever it is. So the homework is going to be tied to something applicable that you would realistically need to do in your TPF work and, or in your real world. And the same thing with the docs example. So some homework is really simple. It might be as simple as doing a quiz. For some of the advanced courses, the homework is going to be a little bit more involved because the homework is ways for you to demonstrate, did you really get some of the main objectives 
that we wanted you to get in the class. Just a couple of examples. Another element of CPF Tech Excellence is one-on-one -on -one learning sessions and one-on-one -on -one support. We recognize that some people might not feel comfortable learning certain software in a, in a class setting. They might prefer just having a one-on-one -on -one session with a tech coach. And that's absolutely fine. If you don't want to learn how to use Doodle in a group session, maybe that's too intimidating or there was no room in the classes or that's just your preference. We have a one-on-one -on -one request form where you just name, email what initiative you are working on what software do you want us to help with and please describe like what you're what you're hoping to learn and then i'll connect you with a tpf tech coach and we'll get you started on your learning lesson and the same thing for one-on-one -on -one support every now and then people, i'll get an email from someone how do i do this or oh, why isn't this working and then i'll just email them back and we can still do that now i might ask that you do create that one-on-one -on -one support for, even though I, I may just answer an email only because I want to start tracking data on what are the questions or support requests people are having to see where the needs are among our TPFers. Like, am I getting more requests for people to help for Google Docs? Am I getting less? That can also help focus what classes we offer or where people need more help. I would say at any point in time, just know you can go in and out of the different opportunities in TPF Tech Excellence, like I might decide to use to go to a class to learn how to do docs, but then I may decide to do a one on one to learn how to do something like Canva. Like if you it's not like you choose a path and you stay on a path, like if, if you choose a one on one learning session for one particular thing, that doesn't mean you have to learn everything one on one. So you can just kind of go in and out of things according to what your preference is. So you may learn Canva one on one, but then docs, you want to do it on group something else you want to do solo learning or whatnot. And one of our third options is something I discovered called DCF Global. DCF Global is really cool because it's like an online website that does tutorials for a lot of different technology platforms. And in my experience, sometimes when you try to watch like a te technology tutorial, like they're either too long or they're too complicated or like you watched a video and I was like, that didn't teach me anything I wanted to know. And that's just disappointing. But I haven't watched all of the GCF videos, but I have watched a lot of them. And I feel like they do a really excellent job of explaining what they need to explain, breaking down the video. So you're not watching like a 10, 15 minute thing. It's really clear, it's really simple. And I have like a little short video that kind of, that I think more, the video doesn't say much, but I think just the vibe of the music or the words of their, where they're talking will kind of explain what it's like watching one of their tutorials. I don't know if anyone has heard of like Headspace or like Calm. Like when I'm listening to their videos, that's what I feel like I'm in. So I'll just play it. In today's changing world, there's always something more to learn. And for over a decade, we've strived to create lessons and videos that help explain it all. We look for topics that are important for the future, as well as those that are overlooked or underrepresented. And occasionally, we just dive into things that we're passionate about. Our goal is to deliver lessons with clarity and have them be approachable to everyone. We use conversational language and put a lot of thought into the pacing and order of things. Our website features new lessons posted regularly, along with videos, audio content, interactives, and more. We invite you to look around and we hope you like what you see. Yeah, short and sweet. So if someone doesn't wanna do a class or maybe the class isn't available, you don't wanna do a one-on-one -on -one learning session, going to GCF Global is another option. I would recommend making an account with them because that way you can track your progress, do your history, and I think this is very helpful. And it's a self course. It has instructions, but it also has videos, it has practice. And I think if you're wanting to learn something like a Google Docs, if you if you prefer to do it by yourself on a safe path, self-paced track, G GCF Global is, is the is the way to go because I think they do they're gonna teach you what you need to know. It's gonna be simple. Just know that whatever technology that you do decide to learn in conjunction with tech excellence. When it comes to getting your badge, you'll just have to let me know that you're doing this class in 
through GCF Global so that I can send you the homework. And by sending me the homework, that's how you're going to show me that even if you decided to take 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 instruction on GCF Global, you're able to do the main functions to show proficiency um, in that technology. Does anyone have a question for me on GCF Global? Yes, yeah, Joni. Is that something that I could share with my DN clients if they yes. need training? You can. Awesome. Okay, thanks. <laughs> Yeah, you go. I, love, I love how you're not just learning for yourself, you're learning for others. And it's free. Yeah, no. Cynthia. That's even better. You answer my question. I was just gonna ask. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. It is free. Yeah, I set mine up yesterday and looked around. It's got some cool stuff. It does. So obviously we're focused on technology. So I'm talking about the technology, but they offer they offer like a whole wide range of resources like career planning other stuff reading material so i think it's just a cool website to check out period but right now we're focusing on technology because we're talking tech excellence but definitely a resource to save if anything to share with other people if you don't with other people if you don't see yourself using it so tech excellence passport and badges so i've been sending these out in the email um and i'll be sending it out again in the follow up but definitely download a tech passport because you're going to need it to earn a badge on the left hand side that's what a badge looks like but in order to get one to put on your passport you're going to have to either take a gcf tutorial go to a one-on-one -on -one learning session or go to a class do the homework submit the homework to me i will review the homework I am not here to put a whole bunch of reds, wrong, 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 wrong. That is not what I'm looking to do. I'm looking to see if you did what the homework asked you to do. And if not, I may email you a couple comments just because I want to make sure that you understand how to effectively use it. Not because I'm trying to critique you or want you to feel like you don't know what you're doing. That is not my intentions at all. But I'm here to be a support in your learning journey. And in order for you to have learned, how to use this particular technology. I just need to make sure you know either maybe what you did wrong or what you could have done better or whatnot. But after doing your homework, you will send me your tech passport and I will be the one to put the badge on the passport. I have to put the I have to put the tech badge, I have to put my my signature and I have to put the date. And then I will email you back your passport. I mean, it's kind of ironic. This is tech excellence, but we're doing this through PDF. I can't find a software that would allow me to do this electronically where I could just like check off your passport electronically. I there might that might exist somewhere, but Nancy or myself hasn't found it yet. But I'm still on the globe. So for right now, you're just gonna have to download a copy of your passport, save it somewhere safe. Um, when you do your homework, if I need to award your badge, you're gonna email me your passport. I'm gonna put the badge and I'm going to have to email you a new copy. So for, for right now, we're, we're doing it a little bit old school because I can't find something out there that does it a little bit smoother for me. And if you, by chance, you lose or misplace your tech passport, um, it is not the end of the world because I know how to help out with that. Um, it's Victoria. Uh, mm -hmm. Just just to be clear, to download this, that's in the email, isn't it? I'm looking at yeah. Um, okay, and I can resend right. it. You no, don't you to. don't. Not necessarily. I just <laughs> I'm I'm on the iPad, but <clears throat> on the Zoom, and then I'm looking you know, really large, watching you guys on on the uh, PowerPoint. So I just wanted to be sure it's not inside of the PowerPoint. It's on. It was all the prep stuff and all of that. It was just a lot of information, so I wanted to make sure. I can go back problem. and do that. Okay, great. Not a problem. Yes, there was a lot of information. Hence the reason why we're having this info session because I knew that was a lot to handle. And it's also on the TCF website, which we'll talk about next. Oh, a quick note. Thanks to the generosity of Deborah J Jacobs. For every five person who get a badge, there's going to be a spinner wheel drawing. So five people on this call, and that's at any given time. So if, I, if five people on this call get a badge for whatever pieces of tech, we're going to do a spinner wheel. And if next week, five more people get a badge, 
there's going to be a spinner wheel with those people who with the, the names of the people who got the badge is going to be what's in the spinner wheel drawing and then they want to pay it forward the person who the spinner wheel falls on okay so like victoria said that e those emails i've been sending they have a lot of information and i don't expect that you're going to remember every single word every guideline every everything that has to do with it so that is why we created some web pages on the TPF website that you can always use as a go-to resource in case you ever forget exactly what we talked about today or any given point. I mean, you can also email me too, but it might take me some time to answer. In case you need the answer like right away, the TPF website is your place to go. So, but where exactly on the TPF website does it live? I'm going to stop sharing and I'm going to reshare and demonstrate. So this is our wonderful TPF website. If you scroll all the way to the bottom of the TPF website, that is where TPF Tech Excellence lives. It's not necessarily like something private, but it's not really like something we want like the entire TPF audience to be clicking on. Hence the reason why it's on the footer. But at the same time, we didn't want to hide it so much that it was going to be hard for a TPFers to find. So it's in the TPF footer. Under four TPFers is a TPF Tech Excellence page. Everything I've been sending in the emails is essentially here. Like any of the FAQs, who can participate, what are the guidelines, who to contact, everything in he is here. And the technology platforms that we're learning, that we're focusing on for this go around, they all have their individual pages. So for right now, we're focusing on basic digital literacy skills, Doodle, Calendly, Canva, Google Workspace, Microsoft, and Zoom. They each have their page, and within their page, within their pages, on the right side are always going to be some additional resources, uh, some information on what is this tool, why would I want to use it, and then some FAQs. And then one FAQ you're going to see that appears on every technology platform are what are essential doodle skills for a TPF or what are essential skills for X Y Z. And with that, you're going to find videos, instructions explaining how to do certain functions, certain tasks that's really important for you to be proficient in, in the technology. Because sometimes someone may know how to use Doodle, but they may not know how to do that, like this one thing. Like I feel like I need to know how to do this one thing to be complete. At the same time, you don't have time to watch a 30 minute video to find that one thing. So I kind of dove through the world of tutorials and videos to find really great videos that kind of explain how you can do very segmented functions related to the doodle. Like I might not need to know how to create a doodle from scratch, but maybe I just want to know how to change my doodle vote. Or maybe I just want to know how to participate in one. Or maybe I just want to know how I connect connect my, my Zoom calendar to a doodle. So some of them will have instructions, some of them will have video, some of them may just have one, but you will find information how to do that particular task or that particular function. And I can, zoom in a little bit if people are like what is that so every page will essentially look, look like this some pages might have more resources might have more videos just because it's like a little bit more like involved for example i'll kind of show you like the google one this called google workspace has like so many different elements to it so as you can see it has like a lot more resources and a lot more faqs and a lot more videos too. But there's a lot to kind of need to know. But this will definitely be a go to resource. If you have a quick question or you're looking how to do something really particular on one of the softwares, yes, you can definitely ask me and I can refer you to a particular video on the Tech Excellence website or I can be like, let's chat. But just know that this is a resource that I hope that you can take advantage of 24 7. It's always available. But now we need to move on to the participation guidelines. So that's really important. So TPF Tech Excellence is billable hours. Anytime, and once again, these, particip these participation guidelines are on the Tech Excellence website in case you ever forget. Anytime you register for a class within the reg re registration form, these guidelines are repeated. Um, whenever you sign up for a class, once you get your you know, thank you, we look forward to seeing you for class or your follow up like these these participation guidelines are repeated everywhere. Just because we anticipate, especially at the beginning, people will have a lot of questions and I don't want you to feel like I don't know what I'm doing. 
So class participation is billable for the entire time. If you take a one hour um, class on, on about drive, that entire hour is billable. Homework is billable for an hour. Free, free classwork is billable for half an hour. And as I, going back to a question that Cynthia had, so you can take a class as many times as you want. You can only bill for it once. Self-learning participation, if, I, if you do decide to go to gcfglobal.org and to learn how to use Google Docs through, through them, that's absolutely fine. Just know that each tutorial you take with them is billable for an hour and a half of time. And to get your badge, once again, you just have to get in contact with me so that we can either get to a meeting so I can send you the homework or you just can email me and be like, I just took this class through GS, GCF. Now I'm ready to like test out or to demonstrate or I'm ready to get my badge. And then I'll just send you the homework. And then one-on-one -on -one learning sessions are also billable. So if you and I, if like I meet with Carol for like an hour and a half, so we can talk about Microsoft Word or like Outlook or like Excel, that entire time we're together is billable hours. The pre, any pre-work I send her is billable for a half an hour and homework is billable for an hour. Yes, Carol. You, are you on mute? You're on mute. Mm -hmm, not a problem. <laughs> okay, what is the, what is the code? Oh, for advanced, it's, it's going to be tech excellence. There is a tech excellence. There on is a, every, yes, mm -hmm. everyone should have a tech excellence code on advanced. If not, let me know. But Nancy, as Nancy Moveas, yeah, we were working on that kind of at the start of the new year. Everyone should have that job code on advanced. And if you have invoices, you're going to have to email Nancy Vivas, letting her know that you need an updated invoice sheet so that she can make sure tech excellence is like another code. But yes, if you're just using advanced tech excellence, you can build to that. That kind of goes back into Q&A. Some questions that I've gotten so far. What is TPF tech excellence? TPF is offering all TPFers an opportunity to work on their digital skills and digital, digital literacy and skills so that you can do your so you can optimize the way you do your TPF work, but a lot of what you're learning can be transferable to what you're doing in your personal life as well. Who can participate in TPF Tech Excellence? Everyone who's a TPFer, regardless of what initiative you're working on. And you do not need the permission of an initiative lead to participate in TPF Tech Excellence. It's open to anyone at any time. I know in the beginning, people, some people ask questions like, oh, is it? Can I like invite like friends or family who want to learn this too? At this time, no, because as we launch this, this is still kind of like a pilot, so to speak. So we want to get it right internally before we talk about like opening it to the broader community. Q and A. Any other? So this was some common look at ask questions that I anticipated some people may have asked, may ask, or people have already asked me. Does anyone have any questions for me? That might be percolating. Yes, Victoria. So I don't have a question. I don't have a reminder. I just have to say that I'm so excited about this because I learned last week when I was working with Kiara, uh, we had something we had to do and I had to learn how to do um, like copy a link and insert it inside of an email that I was doing so that when I send something to you, I will say click here and it goes right to, it was like a revolution. <laughs> I was so excited and I have done that. I have to say Kiara, since then that you remember last Tuesday when we were working, I think I have used it at least seven times since then. And today, uh, my son is a graduate student. I was working with him on something. And he goes, look at you go, mom. <laughs> and I was so proud of myself. And so I, I have to say thank you to Kiara, Stacy, and Donna and everybody. But big thanks to I'll give to Deborah uh, as well, because I just think this is so excellent. So thank you for the effort on this, Kiara. Thank you, Victoria. I appreciate it. That's so awesome. And we look forward to hearing more stuff. Like I'm so that's one thing that I'm excited about. I'm ex I'm excited for all the epiphanies. I love hearing when people are like, you could do that. 
you know how much easier this is going to make X, Y, like I love hearing when it clicks and people can see like they're going to be able to accomplish certain tasks so much easier now that they know or that they have this new skill, understanding. And, and so that's wonderful. So I guess if no one has any other questions, my parting words are to like kind of be fearless and signing up for some of these classes, even if it's like, I have no idea this software even existed or why I would even need to know about it. But the reason why it's being offered um, through TPF Tech Excellence, because TPF finds that it's important to know, especially at least in your, in your TPF work. So know that every learning opportunity is, is going to be unique, is going to be nuanced, because everyone's coming to class is coming with a different understanding, a different skill level, a different background. But I think we have an opportunity, you know, to just become better at what we do. No, I did not show them where to sign up. Thank you, Stacey. I can definitely send so that real quick um, about where you actually sign up for, for classes. So that's pretty important. Um, so once again, I'm on the TPF Tech Excellence page and the sign up will also always be here as well. It will always, I, I didn't want to confuse people by adding a different link and whatever. So whenever you want to know what classes are being offered, if registration is still open, just come here. And this is what it looks like. This is what it will always look like. So these are the classes being offered. And I'm going to send this link in the follow-up, like within the next 10, 15 minutes. But it's always going to look like this unless someone finds a better way for us to do it. And I'm all for it. But of course, I'll let every know, everyone know before. And so for this month, we're doing all Zoom. But in the future, there's going to be some classes offered at TPF. And I will send a link to this in the follow-up. But once again, I, I just want to re reiterate that this is, I'm, I am really looking forward to what everyone's thoughts are and experience are. And keep in mind, we're still evolving. This is still kind of like a pilot, a launch. There's going to be mistakes on the part of the TPF tech coaches as well. Don't be surprised. I can be teaching in a, cl a class and I'll be like, I just kind of forgot how to do this. One moment, please, as I try to remember or I quickly look it up on Google. Like, how do you do this again? But that's once again, we are all learning. So please do not put pressure on yourself thinking that you are going to come in a class and you're going to leave that class knowing all things Google or all things Canva, because that's not a realistic expectation to put on yourself and it might lead to you being disappointed. And I don't want anyone leaving class feeling disappointed. So you are here to learn. And even if you just learn one thing or you just understand one thing, that is not a failure at all. We're happy that you came and we're happy that you, we're happy that you learned. And it is a process. We are all in a learning journey. And that journey will look different for everyone. And we're all going at different paces. But be kind to yourself. And we promise to be kind to you as well. Yeah, thank you, everyone, for coming. I hope you have a wonderful evening.